Well, uh, absolutely delighted by the responses in the comment section to the video where I made uh, challenging Matt Dillahunty or somewhat accusing him of being tyrannical with the truth or with his version of the truth. Um, <clears throat> it's in line with what I've said seems to be a strange process that takes place in people's minds, particularly people who, who self-identify as atheists. Um, I guess we call them, I don't know, strong atheists or whatever. Um, where they seem to replace the God of the Bible with the God of the rules, allegedly, of logic or whatever they consider the rules of rational discussion. Um, whereas I sort of say I abandoned I don't know, religion for that reason? That I don't want anything sort of ruling over me? Uh, it's particularly something that may not even exist. Um, may not exist in the way that I assume that it exists. So I've, I've gone from a position where I assumed I believed in God, although I didn't. <laughs> uh, see, it's not quite so simple as I believe in God or I don't. Um, anyone who's ever gone through something like a crisis of faith will tell you. You often don't know if you believe something or not. Or you, it's a combination of two things, of both states. You're not quite sure what you mean when you say, what do I believe? When you sincerely sit down to try and uh, examine your own views. Do I believe this or not? Uh, this is kind of a Woody Allen-esque kind of you know, obsessive compulsive sort of state to be in. Uh, but anyone who's had a crisis of faith or even a crisis of epistemology, even if you're not talking about God at all, if you're doubting the basic fundamental building blocks of your own view of reality, you're questioning everything. You're questioning the nature of belief. You're not even questioning whether or not you believe something or not. You're questioning whether or not you understand what you mean in the privacy of your own mind when you say that you believe something or when you question whether or not you believe something. You know, the, the typical Catholic, uh, insoluble Catholic schoolboys, or girl, I guess, uh, conundrum. Do I believe this? God says if I don't believe this, I'm going to hell or I'll be punished if I don't believe this. So I do believe this. But do I believe this? I don't know. Ah. You see, belief just... It, the human mind doesn't work like that. We, we can be contradictory at the same time, and we can be completely unsure. Well, people then say, well, that's psychology. That's nothing to do with epistemology. Well, yes, it is, because, <laughs> because psychology is something that informs one's belief. And in point of fact, I would go so far as to say that your psychology is more an accurate position of what you actually are than what your alleged beliefs are. <laughs> um, do you actually believe that which you say or that you believe that you believe? Um, and, and this, to me, is not a crazy sort of go-nowhere kind of argument. It goes to the very nature of what belief is, of what reality is, of what the basic fundamental building blocks of our view of everything is. Or are, I guess. Um, so I'm not going to replace the God that I've abandoned, walked away from, for another God of categories, logical rules, dialectical rules that I cannot violate. Well, the problem is the old theistic faith that I was raised in didn't fit this anymore. I had outgrown it, or I had simply said, I never really believed this in the first place, or whatever it was, I just left it behind me. I'm not going to, therefore, do the old Tarzan swing from one vine to another. I'm not going to go from one pile of bald assertions beliefs that say cannot be violated, things like the law of non-contradiction, that's not a law. I'm a human being and human beings are contradictory. Do I have to fight for my right to be what I am, to be a human being? Human beings are contradictory and inconsistent. 
We believe one thing one minute and then we believe something completely different the next minute. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And I'm not going to submit to a bunch of rules that say that that's wrong or that you can't do that. That's exactly the same reason I walked away from organized religion. They were telling me what I was allowed and not allowed to be. Wait a minute. Uh, I see logic and dialectic and reasoning and all these kind of things as phenomenally useful tools. But I don't want to be subjected to them. I don't want to be subjected to something approaching their tyranny. Because I'm not logical and because I am contradictory, therefore there is something out there, there's some ideal state that I should actually bow down to when I'm answering questions of whether or what, what I actually believe. What, what gives anyone the right or any system out there the right to make me fit into their square hole or their round hole or whatever? I am what I am. Human beings are what they are. You can create all the systems that you want, but the problem is raw human nature is going to make a, a mockery of all of them. Are you afraid to abandon those things? Do you think that it, without some sort of ism up there, some sort of series of rigid rules and all these categories and subsets and all these, you know, maps as to how we should actually be and think, is going to work at the end of the day? Is it going to fundamentally alter what we are as human beings? Or is it just going to, like the Christian ethical said, create a bunch of impossible rules that we simply cannot follow in, by virtue of being exactly what we are and end up hating ourselves or at least um, uh, dismissing ourselves because we don't measure up to our own systems, our own logical systems, our own non-contradictory rules and laws of, of excluded middle and all this kind of stuff, which is useful in its own way. If you, if you keep it in its proper place, if you, if, you, you, if you recognize your tools for tools, they are extremely useful. My tools are not gods. My tools are not my masters. I am not the subject of logic. It is my subject. Logic is a means to an end. It is a means to a desired end, and that desired end is what I say it is. I don't follow logic blindly because it's incumbent upon me to do that. No, it's not. Says who? We invented logic. Logic will do what we tell it to do. Otherwise, logic has become a god. Sorry, no more gods for me. 